Okay, the last thing was the, the curl. Yeah, so we did the gradient, we've done divergence, and now we have to talk about the curl. Okay, what was curl physically? What is curl? How much something? The twists. Twists, right? So excellent. Keep that in mind. That's going to become very important. So curl was how much something twists, right? And it was del cross E. Now we have to put an integration theorem on top of it. And the other thing, do you remember, uh, the answer to this was a vector, right? Itself is a vector, the answer is a vector, del is a vector. Now, in order to figure out how much twist there is on a surface, we have to take integration over the surface itself. Good? How do I take that? So I will do integration over E cross, sorry, del cross E dA over the surface. And I will make it equal to the dot product of E dot DL. And the way to think about that is left-hand side, right-hand side. The left-hand side is the integral of curl over a surface, which equals on the right-hand side, the total amount of swirl present. So Griffith gives a very good example of this. And he makes you draw something like, okay, if this is your surface, there could be multiple curls in here that may or may not go in the same direction. He says, Instead of worrying about each and every curl in each and every part of that whole picture, all I have to do is instead worry about what is actually happening on the surface. That balloon example is really good. So whatever is going on inside the balloon, right, the, there could be swirling, whatever. All we worry about is what is happening to the surface of it. So instead, I will just worry about same surface, the amount of total E over the whole surface. And he says, flux of curl, how much curl is present in our system through the surface, can be found by just going around the edge. So I'll give you an example. Griffith doesn't give you this example, but this is, what, this is how I think about it. Okay, so think about it this way. Tornadoes, how are tornadoes formed? They are basically twisting. Do you actually have to be inside the tornado to figure out the destructive power of it? Or can you just look around the outside of how much swirl is present to figure out what's going on inside? 
we're safer, right? Just figure out what's on the outside. You don't actually have to go in to it to figure it out, right? So that's what it means. So when you talk about curl, you don't actually have to go into the surface and risk your life. You can just as well go just around the boundary. Um, another picture that uh, Griffith gives you, which is a really, really good one. Imagine this is your surface. This is DA. And this is DL just so you have a visual of what that means. Oh, that doesn't look like A. It should be D. Are we okay? Thumbs up. Woohoo, excellent. Okay, so now, remember I asked you to put a little bit of space in between here? I want you today after class, after we're done, to go back in here and make these pictures for yourselves. Look at Griffiths, look at the chapter, see the pictures that he draws and draw them here so that you fundamentally understand the right hand versus the left hand of these equations. 